All right, my more brother, strap in. This might be a long one. We'll see. Okay, this is from my from the Asia Times. I've been reading Asia Times since two thousand five. It's quite knowledgeable. There's very good writers. It's been there for a long time, especially about economic news. A lot of good uh, secret economists actually do print here, so it's a little bit highbrow. It's unknown, and believe it or not, CIA used to advertise on Asia Times trying to recruit people, believe it or not. For the longest time, CIA was one of their biggest supporters. So take it with a grain of salt, but it's actually a very good journal, very good hidden journal for people that don't know about it. U.S. needs more Asians to avoid demographic death. A skills-based immigration system could halt the demographic winter that has descended on America. Bet y'all didn't know that, right? Now that Elon Musk has tweeted that population collapse is potentially the greatest risk to the future of civilization, it must be true. America's total fertility rate fell in 2020 to only 1.67 births per female, the lowest in history and well below the replacement level of 2.1. Uh, that's very true. I think the Hispanic birth rate kind of collapsed because they used to keep us right around uh, 1.8, 1. between 1.8 and 1.9. So that's a pretty significant drop. Ten years ago, when I published How Civilizations Die, the United States still made babies at replacement rate. Though, as I noted, it depended on high fertility among two groups of Americans, evangelical Christians and Hispanics. That's true. Now, demographic winter has descended on America and there is no obvious path to recovery. The only medium term solution lies in the immigration of skilled adults. And the only two prospective sources of a large scale immigration of skilled adults are China and India. That is very true. Civilizations die because they want to. Nations that live for the present and eschew a vision of the future do not take the trouble to raise children. Today's demographic decline has precedence in the hollowing out of Hellenistic Greece after the Alexandrian conquest and the decline of Rome several centuries later. In the modern era, Religious commitment has been the strongest predictor of the desire to bring future generations into the world. Other writers, notably the British demographer Eric Kaufman, have made parallel arguments. What demographers call the great fertility transition occurred with urbanization and the end of child labor. In agricultural societies and early modern industry, children were cheap labor and considered, as in wrongful death lawsuits, a resource with a definable monetary value. That is very true. I've said that many times. Once national pension systems replaced family care for the aged and children no longer were expected to work until early adulthood, children offered spiritual rather than monetary value. Very true. Now we have another 10 years worth of data and they bear out my 2011 thesis. The decline in American fertility tracks and in fact is predicted by the decline in religious commitment among Americans. This has deep implications for public policy. If religious faith is the most important determinant of fertility, public policy can have only a modest impact on births. The annual Gallup survey on American attitudes toward religion includes the question, how important would you say religion is in your own life? Very important, fairly important, or not, in, uh, not very important. As shown in the above chart, the U.S. total fertility rate tracks the percentage who answered very important closely. The link between fertility and faith passes all the tests for statistical robustness. Where data are available, we observe a close relationship between religious commitment and fertility. In a May 2021 survey, the Pew Institute reported Orthodox Jewish adults report having an average of 3.3 children while non-Orthodox Jews have an average of 1.4 children. Orthodox Jews are five years younger on average when they give birth to their first child, 23 versus 28 among non-Orthodox Jews. Data for an American Christians are less clear-cut. Samuel Perry and Cyrus Schlieffer, Samuel Perry and Cyrus Schlieffer of the University of Oklahoma reported in 2020 that fertility fell to 2.3 children in 2016 from 2.7 children in 1972. The rate of church attendance had a small positive correction with fertility. 
they concluded. But fertility of conservative Protestants declined regardless of the rate of church attendance. Arguably, other factors drove American fertility down. Immigration, including illegal from Latin America, dropped off sharply after the 2008 financial crisis. Hispanics were disproportionate contributors to fertility. Hispanic birth rate dropped from 97.4 live births per 1,000 women in 2007 to 65.3, down a third, births per 1,000 women in 2019. A faster rate of decline than among non-Hispanic population. That may have to do with economic factors, but it could also reflect the assimilation of Hispanics into mainstream American culture. We do not have enough evidence to judge. Why has religious commitment declined? Part of the blame may lie with religious leadership. The Gallup data for American confidence in organized religion show a fall by about half since 1973 in the proportion of respondents who have quite a lot or a great deal of confidence in religious institutions. Remarkably, the decline in religious commitment is overwhelmingly a Protestant phenomenon, according to the Gallup data. Since the early 1950s, the proportion of Americans who identify as Catholic has remained in the mid-20% range, while the proportion of Protestants has collapsed by half. The percentage who identify with no religion rose from around zero in the early 1950s to 20% in 2020. Catholic numbers, to be sure, are supported by immigration from mainly Catholic countries. The fall in religious affiliation is mainly a Protestant phenomenon, but the decline in fertility is similar across denominations. Sociologist David Ayers, in July 2021 study for Crisis Magazine, Concluded in the United States, the facts show sharp drops in fertility among Catholic women overall and among those who have ever been married, similar to what we find among Americans as a whole. The great weight of secularization came to America, the country with the spirit of church, somewhat later than it did to the rest of the industrial world and had the same impact on fertility. Secular trends of this kind are difficult to reverse, but not impossible. Russia's total fertility rate rose from a 1999 low of 1.16 to an estimated 1.83 in 2020. Among the high-income countries, only Israel, with a total fertility rate just over three, almost double its peer national average, has a fertility rate above replacement. Excluding the highly religious Haredi portion of Israeli population, the, the fertility rate is still 2.6, far higher than the rest of the industrial world. Israel is the exception that proves the rule. By Western standards, Israel is the most religious among the high-income nations. Up to 98% of Jewish Israelis always place a mezuzah, a small box containing handwritten Bible verses, on their door. 90%, 92% circumcise their male children. 70% maintain Jewish dietary laws at home. 70% fast on Yom Kippur. 78% take part in a Passover cedar, according to one survey. A Jew's decision to live in Israel with all the attendant risks and obligations, including universal military service, by itself implies a high degree of faith even among the, the professedly secular. Germany has an extremely low fertility, but has had considerable success in attracting skilled or semi-skilled immigrants. As of 2018, 4.8 million citizens of other European Union countries have moved to Germany. Almost 10% of the country's 49 million citizens of working age, 20 to 64 years old. But this trend cannot continue for long because the fertility rate of other countries that sent migrants to Germany, Poland, Romania, Italy, Spain, and so forth, is even lower than Germany. That's very true. There's no other place to get people. That's what they're finding out. Germany's demographic profile appears dire, but it has postponed the inevitable aging crisis through skilled immigration. Italy's situation seems hopeless. Its population is aging faster than its peers, and it is losing skilled working age adults rather than importing them. Everybody can't rob from Peter to pay Paul. Immigrants to Italy come overwhelmingly from Africa and the Middle East and cannot replace the diminishing number of productive adults. Very true. The position of the United States is somewhat better than the high income country average for projected old age dependency. China's much discussed demographic problem is about the same as the high income average. But the United States is headed in the same direction as Germany and China. What 
should the United States do about this? Declining fertility is a cultural and confessional phenomenon and not directly susceptible to government initiatives. There are only three options open to public policy. Encourage a higher fertility rate through economic incentives. Attempt to reverse the long-term decline in productive in productivity growth to allow a smaller base of taxpayers to support a larger proportion of retirees. Encourage the immigration of working age adults who contribute more to the social insurance system than they take. Them. The first option is desirable but likely to have a small effect. The second and third options are inseparable. Reversing the long-term decline of labor productivity requires a re reconstruction of America's depleted manufacturing sector. And that in return requires a much larger number of engineers than America universities presently produce. That's their fault. The United States graduates only 40,000 mechanical, mechanical engineers each year, about the same as Germany. Rebuilding American industry will require skilled immigrants. Like most industrial countries, the United States confronts a sharp drop off in labor force growth and rapid aging of their adult population. Economic incentives for childbearing can mitigate but not reverse the infertility trend. That's why they're, that's why they're banning the portion. We might adopt a sliding scale of Social Security and Medicare deductions to the benefit of large families, childless people or free riders on the social insurance system because they do not invest in the next generation of prospective contributors and increase the per child income tax deduction. Hmm. Ah, uh, amen to Joe Biden, huh? But bringing children into the world ceased to be an economic decision generations ago. Today, it is an act of faith and the tide of faith is receding. The only medium term mitigation of demographic decline can come through immigration. Specifically, the immigration of skilled individuals who are likely to contribute more to the economy than they cost. The estimated cost of illegal immigration to the U.S. range from $53 billion to $200 billion, cited by former President Trump. But any negative number is unacceptable. Immigration policy must aim for a positive economic contribution. There are only two sources of large numbers of skilled working age adults, namely China and India. Asian Americans number 19.9 million in the 2020 century, including 4.1 million Chinese, 4 million Indians, and 1.5 million Koreans. Hmm. More than I thought. By any measure, Asian Americans are successful. A total of 32.4% of Asian American households earn in excess of $100,000 a year, compared to 20.1% of all American households. See that? Only 20% of American households earn six figures. Up to 50% of Asian Americans hold a bachelor's degree compared with 42.42% of the total population. America's predicament calls for a radical revision of U.S. immigration policy to favor skilled adults in emulation of, uh, of Austria, Australia and Canadian standards. China in 2015 awarded 1.2 million bachelor's degrees. All right, yada, yada, yada. Oh, this is way too long. All right, skipping down, short-term fix. The immigration policy outlined above is not the best solution to America's economic problems, nor indeed is it a solution to the long term. The optimal solution is to reverse America's cultural decline of the past two generations, but that is beyond the competence of public policy. An inspirational leader might summon Americans to a sense of national purpose, as John F. Kennedy did with the Apollo program or Ronald Reagan with the strategic defense initiatives and elicit the better angels of our nature. We do not know who such a leader might be. In the meantime, we must play the hand that we are dealt. The arrival of a large number of Chinese, Indian, and other skilled immigrants will produce a degree of social friction that should not be minimized. Highly qualified immigrants make net contributions to society. They add more economic value and pay more taxes than they cost. In the large, their contributions represent a net benefit to other Americans. But economic life has not always lived in the large. Locally, their presence would set a higher bar for tertiary education and workforce advancement for many other Americans. Some exacerbation of social tensions would be inevitable. In the long term, moreover, em Asian immigrants would not reverse the long-term demographic decline. Immigration of skilled adults only plugged the holes left by the fertility decline of previous generations. All right, I'll leave it there. Uh, uh, 
One thing I like about uh, the Asia Times, right, and especially David P. Goldman, they don't give a crap. They don't give a shit about telling the truth. I've been telling you about the demographic cliff. I've been telling you about the uh, demographic uh, death cross, especially for white people. They can't be stopped. The abortion mandates, uh, the anti-abortion mandates are just mitigating procedures to slow things down. You're not going to stop it. Okay. The reason that um, women don't want to have kids or don't want to have more than one is because they don't need them. Like he just said, uh, having children is more of an act of moral faith than it is necessity. You don't need kids, especially in this environment. You don't need kids to retire. don't need kids to take care of you. Kids are a cost, and you have to believe in the next generation to have children. And that's what they have depended on, but guess what? That belief in that sentiment or that cult socialization is eroding. And so you're accelerating the decline even faster. So, as I've been saying for the last five, six years, the reason they're importing people is to keep their numbers up. There's a certain structure, that you, demographic structure, that you have to have to stay stable. The United States has been importing people to, to stay stable. And they've been importing children, very young people, to actually socialize them faster. But that might not be enough. They can't wait for these kids to grow up, especially after COVID, especially after they lost so many people. They're going to have to import adults that are, have, have skills, just like the H-1B visas that they always call for. You're probably going to see that increase at the top. And then skilled uh, laborers, the builders, cement workers, all that kind of stuff at the bottom from the, Lat from the Latin countries. But guess what? The Latin countries have low birth rates, too. There's only so, much, so many people that they can give you, which is probably why immigration is down. So peep game. This was a long article, but thing is, it's... Uh, it should be heeded to, you know, you don't have to believe me, but tuck this one away. Put this one in your cap and tuck it away and wait for other evidence to pop up. Even though the other evidence is already there. I've seen charts. You know, he, he showed you charts in this one. Stuff is real. They talk about it. They talk about China all the time. They never talk about us. There's certain, there's certain reasons that you have a, a stable demographic structure. Old people are just one of them. Economics is just one of them. Also, uh, defense, uh, social, uh, social and cultural adhesion is a whole bunch of reasons you have to have a vibrant fertility rate, which you don't. So we have gone from zero population go growth to negative population growth. Bravo. So we have to see how this is going to turn out. Anywho, with that, I'm going to jump off here. This is BGS out. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.